In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring consistency and control to AI generated code when using agent force for developers extension. So let's start by opening the dev assistant. Just click on that agent force icon in the activity bar. So dev assistance is an interface within agent force for developers where you can ask AI to generate code from natural language. It has context based on the files you already have open in your editor. So here I'm working on an Apex class where I need help generating a method that creates booking records for a session. I'll go ahead and provide the method parameters and a bit of business logic in my prompt. In this case, I want the booking records to be created only if the session has available capacity. So let's go ahead and execute and you can see that the assistant thinks for some time and it has generated code that's grounded in the actual objects and field in my org. Now looking at the code, I notice that the SOCL and the DML operations are running in system mode, but I would prefer that they always run in user mode and I don't want to have to specify this every time in my prompt. This is where AI customization rules comes in. So by adding a simple markdown file in the .sfdx slash a4d slash rules folder, you can now define rules that can tell the model how the code should look and behave. So here, for example, I've created a rule set for Apex. Now each rule includes a name and then you will see a description and most importantly, a file pattern and a list of guidelines as you can see here. So here you can see that we have guidelines to ensure both the SOCL statement uh, and also the DML both use the user mode. All right, so now that we have the rule in place, let's try generating the code again. So now this time you can see that the model thinks and uses all that rules. And you can clearly see that the output respects this rule. So all the queries and DML are correctly set to the user mode. And now we have the code as desired, we can bring into the editor. Now you can also use AI customization rules for test generation. So for example, here in my Apex best practices, I want to go ahead and add some more rules this time specific to test classes. For example, I want to make sure that the tests use newer assert classes. Now that we have rule in place, let's test this with testing agent that's part of agent force for developers. So here I can provide the apex file method and the test file. And you can see that the agent runs and generates the test. Now if you look at the test method and look at the asserts there, the asserts follow the exact format that I had specified in the rule. So let's go ahead and accept it. Currently we support rules for classes, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And we recommend it's best to define one rule per file type to keep things simple and clear. Now let me show you one more example, this time for LWC component generation. So here again, I'm in my dev assistant and now I'm going to ask the agent force to help me generate a lightning web component. And you can see that the agent goes and generates this LWC component. But I want to make sure that the template follows a specific structure. So I can go ahead and add a rule for how the conditionals and sections should be in for the HTML. So just like before I drop the rule into the appropriate folder and let me try to generate the code again to see if the code generated aligns with my template preference and the rule that I defined. And you can see that it does follow the template preference that I defined. Finally, you can toggle this feature on and off as per your preference. So to do that, you'll go to the settings and look for AI rules within your settings. Here you'll find settings to enable or disable the custom rules and also control where you want this feature to be within the user interface. Now to understand limitations and considerations of using AI customization rules, check out our documents linked in this video description. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, 
do not forget to subscribe to the Salesforce Developers YouTube channel for more videos like this.